Dr. John Obineche, a clergy by, by calling and a lecturer by profession, teaching at the University of Port Harcourt. And this course we are looking at now is titled RCS 401.2, offered generally by 400 level students. And the course is titled Modern Development of Christianity in Africa. And so it's for the 400 level, that means they must have had some rudiment of uh, religious studies, especially the history. And the history, church history is my major, and this course is on Christian is church history and is the heart of church history. And so the course, uh, to introduce the course, we know that uh, modern development of Christianity in Africa tells even about the course more. Not that Christianity is new in Africa, but what happens to Christianity. And we see here that, of course, the international development of Christianity in Africa is a very significant landmark uh, that we can see. Because today, the African continent is the continent that is composed of more than 50 countries, of course, made up of republics, made up of kingdoms, federations, and what have you, different tribes and peoples. And of course, the continent of Africa borders the southern half of the Mediterranean Sea, the Atlantic Ocean to the west, and then Indian Ocean to the south southwest. Then, of course, Africa stretches well south of the equator to cover more than 12 thousand or millions of square miles making Africa a very world second to the largest in world population and the, the second to the largest continent of course we see in the world and so uh, millions of Africans subscribe to Christianity of course and of course we know that we have many different religions in Africa but Christianity uh, happens to be the foremost in Africa both in influence and of course in orientation and uh, what have you there. But also to say that the knowledge of God, we are talking of Christianity as a religion. We are not talking about the knowledge of God in Africa. Because before the coming of Christianity to Africa, Africans have the idea of God. They have the knowledge of God. And of course the God event, which we call Christianity, is not added actually to the Africans. Because Africans have the knowledge of God, but they did not approach God the way the Western countries, the Western uh, continent presented a religion. And the religion they presented is what is here represented as Christianity. But before the coming of Christianity, Africans were not destitute of the knowledge of God. And even to show this, the, we see that Abraham, the patriarch, as old as that time, in the Old Testament, Abraham saw down in Egypt. And of course, Egypt is an African country. Where he is now looking inside for survival, economic recession that is uh, almost the emblem of many countries of the world today, even in Africa. But there was economic recession that pushed Abraham from the Middle East to Africa, to Egypt. And he went there, and after him, we, we all know in history how the Israelites went to Egypt as a survival heaven, searching for food when there was famine. And that's what took Jacob. Jacob's children to that way that made Joseph to be what he was. So to tell you that in fact in God event, Africa is a credo. Africa remains part and parcel of it. In survival for in search for survival, they went there to the fatal crescent as it was known. And the fatal crescent was friendly. It was a friendly nation and a nation that their kings were very wise. And of course, their money, their administrative management was very, very wise, well superb at the world of their time. And that was why Joseph went there. And after Joseph, the Israelites went, not as slaves, but they went there in search for survival until they all sojourned there and it became a safe heaven for them. And of course, we cannot say that all was rosy. Africans too have their own uh, problem. After the survival and all of things, I think the major problem that Africans have is not that they didn't know God, it's not that they were not uh, uh, developed agriculturally or economically, but the African has a problem of not sustaining the God-given endowments that they have received from God. So apart from that, even in the New Testament, 
When Jesus was born, his own countrymen rejected him. He was kind of hated from birth. And Africa was the first place that uh, he went over to me. That should be that should mark the beginning of Christianity. Jesus as a baby sojourned in Egypt, the same Egypt to save his life until the Pharaoh or the Herod who was against him died. History did not tell us how long it took him to go there to, to the time Herod died. We, history did not tell us how many years, and of course, the surviving history and authentic history of that is the scripture of Israel, the Christian Bible. So, but after the death of his enemies, he was brought back to his own country, that's in Israel, and that she tells you. But you see, maintaining what I said, the Africans had that opportunity, but the, the God was there. God came there, the Old Testament, they allowed him to go with their blessings, they allowed them to go with their blessings, the Israelites, and Jesus came again. How I wish they had known, they would have returned him, and of course, they allowed him to go. But you see that Christianity has its own beginning, even from Christ. Christ visited Africa first, and Christ went there first. And if Africa was that hostile, they would have probably killed him as the uh, as the heralds and the people of their time, you know, wanted to kill him. But they hosted him, hosted his infancy, and he grew. But we said, or here we can say here, that the first 500 years of Christianity in Africa was marked with severe perils, temptations. The first 500 years among the African Christians. Yet, it was within these centuries that church, the church developed its forms of worship, doctrines, liturgy, hymns, and church organizations, which did not only survive through the ages, but have influenced the church throughout the centuries, especially in Africa. According to Hebrews, Jonathan Hebrews, you know, he further revealed that it was these same centuries that witnessed the emergence of the great African church leaders and theologians such as Tertullian, Cyprian, Augustine, and others whose theological ideas and interpretations came to be adopted all over the, the church history, the Christian history. And uh, it should be also noted that it is the heritage of this North African church that has provided the foundation and guidelines on which the new Christianity or the new churches in Africa are built are developed and sustained even through the ages. Today, it should be acknowledged that African Christianity is existing on its foundations on which they probably refer to as the faith of our fathers in Africa. So, and for this, this course, of course, as I said, the title, Modern Development of Christianity in Africa, explores how Christianity as a dynamic force has developed into an unprecedented and varied forms and shapes it is encounter with the different cultures within the geographic areas of the continent of Africa. And of course, all uh, the past history, in church history, I put a book out in one of his books, said all that we can see of the history for now of Africa, Christianity in Africa, has been telling us of what the missionaries did and did not do. What the missionaries did and did not do. But the modern Christianity in Africa Test of what Africans did with the gospel they received for these centuries. What did they do with it? How far have they gone with it? And as the years change, many things met on a force. And we see the development, economic development. We see the, the years have gone. And then the changes in countries, names, changes in uh, modernization. Uh, has come in, colonization came in and others. What are the changes that have come along in the history of Christianity? This is actually what the course is all about. To tell us how Christianity thus far has grown, has developed to match the world development in every aspect. In economy, geographical development and what have you. How has Christianity adapted even to the modern cultures? How has it adapted to even the, 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 the world uh, uh, development and modernization that has affected every country of the world and every part of the world? And now that is what this has to do. And today we have many developments even in the same Christianity. We have several eras in Christianity. We have the first century Christianity. We have the, that's the Asian period. We have the medieval period, 
we have the reformation period and we have the modern period in this modern period what are the things how has Christianity fared how has it developed and that is what this course is all about from uh, the ancient Christianity missionary Christianity reformation to even now we have the mission the, the missionary Christianity has come and missionary Christianity has metamorphosed into many things Pentecostalism has come the global economy has affected even Pentecostalism and Pentecostalism has come in its varied colors and shapes and even faith and doctrine so where is Christianity and how far has it grown in Africa that's what this course is all about